My name is Roz, and I'm 28 years old. Last October, I went to spend my vacations in Iceland. I always felt interested by the country and Northern Europe in general. Maybe because I was always fond of its ancient and early medieval history. Not just the Viking Age, but overall, Norse mythology and mysticism. I've seen my fair share of documentaries on the subject, and I had a wide library of books dealing with those themes. And since I couldn't get anyone to accompany me, I simply decided to go by myself. I booked a small, nice hotel in Reykjavik, which was quite cheap. I assume Iceland isn't exactly the hottest place for tourism, literally, especially during autumn and winter. When my flight arrived, I was immediately convinced that I had made the right choice. The country was beautiful, with its wide landscapes and volcanic nature. Who needs vast forests when you're so close to the northern sky, am I right? The people were so nice and friendly. Besides, Iceland's natural appeal, I soon realized that the urban and nocturnal life was inviting and fun enough. I even discovered a really cool bar which was decorated and influenced by pagan elements. It felt like I was going back in time to an old tavern. Ironically though, most people who frequented it seemed to be young. The music that was playing was mostly dark folk and neo-medieval, with some hard rock variations also. The beer and meat were excellent, and by the second time I went to that bar, which was appropriately named Thor's Hammer, I was approached by a young couple. They were about my age, give or take, based on their appearance. Hello, welcome to Iceland. My name is Hans, and this is my girlfriend, Freya, the man said. He had a long beard, short hair, and blue eyes. He was tall and thin. Uh, hey, my name is Roz. I'm from the United States. Uh, how did you know I wasn't a local? I said. We heard you speaking to Ivan in English. Ivan, the bartender, is actually from Belarus. He lives here for quite a while now. I guess it's safe to say that he's one of Iceland's adoptive sons. Not too many of those, Freya replied. She had long red hair and green eyes. How do you like the country so far? Hans asked as I invited him and Freya to sit with me at my table. It's wonderful. I've been wanting to visit Iceland for quite a while, so no regrets. I answered, being happy with the opportunity to socialize with some locals. That's good to know, Ross. Listen, next weekend is Halloween. Both me and Freya are attending to a private party on a farm. The place belongs to a friend of ours. A few people are going and hopefully it will be a lot of fun. You're supposed to be addressed accordingly, but don't worry, half of the guys and girls are just good for music, food and drinks to have a good time. If you come with us, uh, me and Freya can come pick you up here next Friday, around 7 p.m. What do you say? Hans asked. Oh, oh really? Oh, that definitely sounds good. Uh, sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a deal. I answered, excited. Great. See you on Friday. Freya and Hans departed. I couldn't believe my luck. Next Friday, I was there at Thor's Hammer. I even brought with me a witch's hat that I bought at a store. I guess I didn't want to be one of the spoilers, so since I was wearing a full black dress, I was going as a perfect dark sorceress, minus the broomstick, that is. Iceland is traditionally a very safe country, one of the safest in the world, even. So I didn't even think twice when taking a ride with Hans and Freya, who were driving now to the farm in their van. It was one of those Volkswagen vehicles, very popular among people who like to travel freely. The van was decorated with all sorts of mystic symbols, which I easily identified. Norse ruins and others, like the god Odin's Valknut, and of course, Mjolnir, Thor's hammers precisely. Twenty minutes later, we arrived. The farm wasn't too big, but still enough to hold a decent party. We drove to the farm's gate, and we were inside the property. There were already a few people there besides the common Frankensteins, vampires, and other witches, like me. I also saw a couple of trolls, and even a very tall woman dressed as Hell, the Norse goddess of death. Easy to identify because half of her face was painted like a skull, 
while the other half kept our living, flesh and blood appearance. I was having the time of my life. It wasn't raining or snowing, so we were enjoying ourselves outside. The alcohol and the food, mostly roasted meat, kept everyone warm. Plus, the eerie dark music, very Halloween-like, and very pleasant conversations made it even better. Eventually, when it was already midnight, someone tried to grab everyone's attention. It was, precisely, the tall woman dressed as the goddess of death. Apparently, I wasn't the only foreigner present, because she spoke in English. Good evening, everyone. Now, let's continue with the festivities inside. More surprises await, she said, while everyone shouted in agreement. We were now walking towards a big barn, following the goddess of death. Inside, there were several torches and candles, red and black, all lit, of course, displayed in a circle in the middle of the division. Everyone started chanting. Uh, I was now feeling a little bit awkward, but this was only the beginning. A young woman dressed in white stepped into the middle of the circle. She shouted something in Icelandic that I couldn't understand. And then, the goddess of death came from behind and smashed the woman's head with a massive hammer. The woman seemed to be expecting such an attack because she just let herself being beat to death without trying to escape in spite of screaming in pain. I realized that I had been invited to a Halloween party of some kind of cult. Thinking fast and taking advantage of the collective euphoria that everyone else in the room was experiencing, I was now walking back slowly to the barn's exit. Too slowly, because I heard Freya screaming. Roz, wait! You're next! There is no way you're going back now! You agreed! For sure, I didn't agree with being slaughtered. I realized that they were completely insane, immersed in alcohol, and who knows what else. I was now running like a cheetah instead of walking slowly. I got lucky because it was dark and there were several other women dressed in black wearing witches hats like me. I was luckily also more sober than everyone else, so I managed to get into Han's car. Fortunately, I remembered that he left his keys in the ignition. I drove away as fast as I could from the insane coat. I was so terrified and completely out of my comfort zone that when I arrived at my hotel and asked in panic for the police, I was afraid that even the local cops might be a part of the creepy cult of death. Fortunately, they weren't. I have no idea what happened to Freya, Hans, and their brothers and sisters, specifically the woman dressed as a goddess of death. I read a couple of articles later on when I was already home, of course, but nothing too concrete. One thing I do know, I will never go to Iceland again, not even with my own personal bodyguards. Halloween had arrived, and it brought with it the chance of a second attempt, a retry. I needed this. I needed it badly. Me and my ex, Stacy, had just broken up. I was devastated, and a phase of lying in bed crashed over me, drowning me in my own sorrows as my mind became enslaved by the thoughts of her and the lack of our relationship. Seven years. Seven years full of laughter and joy and the genuine miracle that is love blossoming all throughout the two of us. She completed me, and with her absence a hole the size of Jupiter had seized my shattered heart. Breakups corrupt people. It grasped in its foul claws of depression, guilt, silence. I was now one of its numerous victims, plagued with the discontent of confusion and overall terror. The end of October, the Halloween that was to be tonight, brought along with it the chance to get her back. We were both invited to the same party, and it had only been a month or so since the breakup, so there must still be hope for me getting back with her. It was my friend Josh who was hosting the party, and when I told him of the breakup, 
Well, he subtly smiled, and then put on his two-faced mask and told me that there were plenty more fish in the sea. This simple message spiraled me down a path of losing trust, friends, and the ability to put my faith in anyone. But Stacy, the one true love of my life. Maybe tonight I can make amends with Josh, whilst at the same time fixing what me and Stacy once had. It would all work out. It had to. I arrived early. A mere five minutes stood between myself and reaching Josh's house. Each second that ticked round the clock drilled a violent noise deep into the back of my mind. What if she says no? What if she found someone else? What if she's not there at all? For a couple of minutes, I chose to walk in silence, collecting my thoughts, preparing my mind. That's when I saw a certain blonde-haired goddess bounding along the street in the same direction. I was going in. It was her. It was Stacy. I hastily hid behind a pair of dumpsters, eagerly yet anxiously awaiting her departure from my proximity. I had been planning this. It needed to go perfectly. Once she left my vision, I carefully continued walking up the road until finally I had arrived at Josh's home. The house was engulfed in all things spooky. The grass was drenched in slime, the windows covered in cobwebs and drooled fake blood onto the plastic gravestones below. There were lights flashing aggressively from within, and mist floating out the slightly open door. I entered. Richard? Oh my god, man, it's so good to see you. How you been, dude? A shrill voice pierced my ear sockets, making me reel back subtly in anguish. Until I saw it was Josh greeting me to his party. <laughs> I've been alright, thanks, mate. <laughs> see, you've certainly been doing well. I faked a chuckle, to which he retorted, eh, I suppose I have. Right then, make yourself comfortable. Drinking game's been in about one minute now. Most of the guests are here. I hope you're ready. And with that, he took off. And the alcohol began. But before any drinking began, I saw Stacy. This was my chance, as I shakily trembled over to her. But about five meters from her, hidden by a crowd of people, Josh walked up to her, gave her a devilish stroke to the face, and then their lips collided. Shock. Bewilderment. Chaos. The foul emotions entrenched themselves deep within me. I strained my eyes to open wide as I watched their love vibrate all around them. I needed a drink. The shock had left me not just disheartened, but the agonizing pain since the first breakup, it quadrupled in intensity. It was too much. I then let myself drink bottle after bottle of spirits, drowning my dismay with the bubbles of poison, hoping they would subdue my pain. But then came a whole new stage of overwhelming emotions. Fury and anger. I grabbed the nearest bottle. It was a struggle as I swayed from side to side, dizzy but still upright. Made my way over to that little shit Josh. Smash the bottle over a nearby table, and then proceeded to puncture each lung of his, breathing mine and Stacy's air. No exposure, I just wanna be a loner. Uh, some can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders. Like moving boulders just to get out of the home. It sucks. I've had enough. I don't wanna feel the stuck under the rug. On my How dare he kiss her? She was mine, all mine. Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got Josh was gone. And Stacy now had no reason to love anyone else but me. The police came soon after. They told me the next day about what I had done, describing in detail the pain and the suffering I'd caused. I smiled. Their pain made me forget mine, but it still wasn't enough. I still needed Stacy. But I had to say, the joy I found in watching Josh's wretched face slashed and ripped apart, bleeding out of every inch of flesh I'd opened, 
It amused me so greatly. I wanted more. I needed more. Years later, and one day I was released on good behavior. And now, now, I walk towards the town that had abandoned me that day in court. The time was ripe. Halloween would strike once more. Did you know that the rate of violent crimes goes up during Halloween every year? According to researchers and police, violent crimes increase by 40 to 50 percent in the evenings of October 31st. Unless you work with the police or you're a researcher, I'm guessing you did not know that. So did I. So last year's Halloween. It was our yearly tradition among my circle of friends. So I'd been invited to a costume party with some of my friends and a bunch of other people. Just like how kids get dressed as Spider-Man and Indiana Jones and go trick-or-treating to get candy, we adults dressed even more ridiculously. But instead of candy, we got beer and vodka, and occasionally an STD. At this particular Halloween party, I decided to go as Vlad Tepes as Dracula. I had the fake pointy ears, the plastic fangs, the cape, even had my nails done. I looked like a very convincing vampire. Usually my friends and I would go together from home, but I'd forgotten to drop the key to the shop where I worked and my boss needed it, so I told them to go without me. I'd drop off the key with my boss and then meet them at the party later. There wouldn't be a time to change, and I didn't see any point in changing. It was Halloween, after all. There was nothing weird about a grown man dressed as a vampire. The night was cool, and the shop was closed, so I didn't see a need to get a cab. I walked down to the shop and dropped the key off with my boss. I'd worked with him for three years, and I had never seen him take a day off on the holidays, even though we barely made sales on those days. He would work till the early hours of the morning until it was time to change shifts. He snorted at my costume, and I made fun of his mustache, but only in my head. I left the shop and began to hustle down the road so I could make it to the party on time. Cars passed, but no cabs were in sight, so I turned my walk into a jog and hurried down the street. As I jogged my way down to the address for the party, I used the park as a shortcut and saw a man and his girlfriend strolling in the breeze. The man was dressed as Freddy Krueger, and the lady was a vampire, like me. I could tell by the cape she wore and the bright red lips. A man was running towards me from the opposite direction. I thought he was also late for something, but he ran into the couple and pushed the man away. I thought maybe he was a jealous ex or something like that, so... I stopped to watch the drama that would unfold. But the man suddenly pulled out a knife and stabbed the man in the side. The man dropped to the ground, groaning as the girl screamed. The man flew at her next, stabbing her repeatedly all over her chest. I stood there, paralyzed by fear, and watched. The man stopped stabbing her and opened her mouth before taking out the fake fangs she had worn and keeping them in his pockets. He looked up and saw me and smiled with glee. He used the woman's cape to wipe the blood off his knife and started running toward me. This must be my lucky day, he shouted as he ran. Shit, I said and turned to run. The fear that paralyzed me was now motivating me to hide. I took off running with my cape billowing in the wind and his boots tapping on the concrete path of the ground. He was fast, much faster than me. Or maybe it was because I was already tired from jogging earlier. I could hear him getting closer, and I wondered why he was chasing me or why he had stabbed the girl. I'm not a real vampire, I shouted with little difficulty through the fake fangs. Maybe he was demented and thought the costumes we wore were real. I hope not, he replied, puffing hard, still hard on my heels. Shit, I said as I continued running. He wasn't demented. He was just a psychopath. I saw the end of the park ahead and saw cars moving and honking. I knew if I could just make it there, I would be safe. But my muscles were already screaming from fatigue, and the guy was still hard on my heels, judging from how loud his boots sounded. I took a turn that would help me cut across the little distance left, and he must have noticed it because he suddenly lunged at my feet, and I landed heavily on the concrete, bruising my jaw. We rolled, and I managed to throw him off. I saw something glitter, 
and his knife struck me on the cheek. Get away from me! I screamed as I backed away on my hands, hoping the people nearby would hear me and come to my rescue. He came rushing after me with his knife aimed at my heart. I kept him at bay with my legs and managed to kick him right on the knee, making him collapse. I swiped at the blood on my cheek and continued running towards the street. We had rolled onto the grass, so I did not hear him chase after me. I felt a burning pain in my back and turned around to see that he had stabbed me. He pulled it out viciously and stabbed me again, this time a bit higher and more painful. I could feel my heart rate increasing and my legs weakening. I looked at his face, dazed, to see an amused smile on his freckled face. He was enjoying himself. I gathered all my strength into one hand, intending to punch him in the face, but the effort of making a fist seemed too much, and my hand unfolded at the last moment. Instead of the hard face I expected to feel from punching someone, I felt a spongy softness as the nails I fixed sank into his eyes. He screamed even louder than the girl he had killed and dropped his knife. Blood poured out of his red, meaty sockets like a cry of blood. I released myself from his grip and pushed him backward. He stumbled and fell, blind as a bat. I turned back and continued limping towards the street. Help! I cried weakly, praying someone would hear me before I bled out. I made it to the street and collapsed right in the middle of the road. The incoming car applied its brakes in time, and people soon gathered to see what was wrong. I pointed at the park and passed out. I was taken to the hospital via ambulance. The police picked up the man and discovered that he was participating in a game that took place every Halloween. He and the other members would spin a wheel, and whatever it landed on was what they would hunt for the day. The man who had tried to kill me had ended up picking vampires, so he was required to kill as many people dressed as vampires as possible and bring back a trophy, which is why he had taken the girl's fangs. He said they were all over the country. He alone had racked up over 13 kills in the last three Halloweens. They usually took lots of stimulants to give them the energy they needed, which is why he seemed so fast and a little bit crazy. The girl died, though, and so did her boyfriend. No one had known they were in the park, so it was a bit difficult to find him before he bled out. That was my last Halloween event. Now I prefer to stay indoors and watch scary movies with my doors locked and my revolver beside me.